Let's start by learning how to handle user interactions in AMP. Users need a way to navigate through a site with more than one web page. That's why many sites and apps use a navigation menu. We'll make one here too. Our product manager has said that our menu should open when the user clicks on a horizontal bars icon at the top of the page. Once open, the menu should close when the user either clicks off of the menu or clicks on an X icon in the menu's top right corner. And of course, our menu should also contain links to other pages. Looking at the list of AMP components, we decide to make the menu with the AMP sidebar component. We'll use the div tags to implement the horizontal bars icon, sometimes also called a hamburger icon, and the X icon. We'll implement the links as an unordered list of anchor tags, which is a standard web solution. Some questions still remain, such as, how do we detect when a user has clicked an icon? Or, how do we open and close the AMP sidebar? To find our answers, let's learn how AMP detects user input and how we respond to it. Think of all the ways in which people interact with websites. They click a mouse, they tap on a touch screen, they type on a keyboard, and so on. These interactions are called events. And how does a website respond to these user events? Clicking a button might mark all of our email as read, or it might open a menu. Pressing escape on the keyboard might close that menu. Swiping right with our fingers might accept a task or a connection. In AMP, the responses a site makes to these user interactions are called actions. In AMP, we handle events using the on property. We can set the on property to indicate a desire to react to an event of interest. We also specify the action to take when that event occurs. So when the user performs an action on a site, AMP goes back and checks if there's an action associated with that event for the affected component. For example, imagine a button that makes a message disappear from the screen. In AMP, when the user clicks the button, the tap event is fired. If that event is included in the on attribute for that button, the action occurs, which hides a warning message. This same sequence of events could be implemented in classic HTML like this. On click assigns the event handler to the button element. When the click happens, we get the ID of the HTML element with ID warning, and we hide it. If you're ever using jQuery, your code might look like this. Again, we use the on click to assign the event handler, and we can use this shorter syntax to hide the element. And in AMP, the code looks like this. We assign the event handler using the on attribute. The key part here is that tap warning.hide. Let's unpack that. Tap is the event. Warning is the ID of the component to act upon. And hide is the action to perform. When the user clicks the button, the tap event is triggered. The event handler for the tap event runs and hides the warning message. Hide is one of the generic actions available for every AMP component and other HTML elements as well. Some components may have unique actions too. Actions can look like functions and some may even accept arguments. The documentation for an AMP component will contain a list of actions that can be performed on that component. If an action is obvious, it can sometimes be simply omitted. AMP will infer your intent and run the obvious action. 